So today I was going to uh, touch on advanced ROI object classification. Let me set this up in that normal ROI counting until Image Pro 10 came out was along these lines. You would set up your regions. Here I have some wedding paper with spray droplets, and maybe I want to do an analysis of these particular regions. If you would have ROIs on the image and then just do a normal count, all of the data would be included as one area within the data table. The only way to get further distribution within these regions if you're using the parent-child app. So as everyone remembers, again, this just combines all the data to one. It's really the ROIs are really setting regions, um, inclusive areas where to, to measure. And that's all they did. With Image Pro 10, count by ROI, we added a new feature under the count as a reminder, and we can count by ROI. And the whole idea behind count by ROI was that you could have your region, your ROI set up, as many as you need it, and then when you count by ROI, it would maintain these parent regions, and we would report the data per region, which is what you're seeing here, and they would also be color-coded by region. And again, the data table would correctly report all of that data per region now, or per, per parent. So the question then becomes, what if you want to do a further analysis? How do you analyze if you want to do a distribution analysis within each of these regions? Um, we work with some people recently doing exactly that, where they actually had to set up various regions, but then they had to do a distribution analysis, a single variable class by a single parameter, area, mean, intensity, whatever it may be, and then do that second classification. The question is, how do you do that? So in this case, everything is the same right now. You define your ROI. Well, let me just go to the second slide. Classify objects within regions of interest. So the question is, how do we get from count by ROIs to actually doing classification within each of these regions? It's actually following the same principles we've already done, shown, and learned. Draw our regions, or using grids to create regions, and put those on the image and count by ROIs. Standard, we get the image, and this is what we end up with here on the left. Then, once we've done that, and I'll go through a live demo, is we can select our classification method, our classified by measurement, a single variable class. This is the classified group on the count size tab. And then I choose which parameter I want to measure. And one of the key things is because when we count by ROIs, those regions have been changed into measured objects to make them parent objects. And so one thing you just want to be careful of, whatever parameter you're selecting, make sure that the top level, in this case, the top size of that bin, does not include the parent. And I'll just show a quick example of that. And then you can name the classes small, medium, large, whatever is appropriate or given size ranges. Here I just did it. And using the default values of finding the uh, min to max regions. The second step is, after we have excluded it, there's a feature in classified by measure or single variable class, spread data range. If no one's ever used it, there's, there's this little double arrow here. What that means is, once I've set up the min, max, redistribute along those ranges. This will do an even distribution. Or I could actually, if I have, by my, uh, my standard operating procedure, maybe I have defined ranges here, you can enter those in instead of having to use a spread bond. But basically, this will redistribute those values evenly within here across a number of bins. And that's what this double arrow does. And then press OK to classify the data. And once I've done that, in this case, for each parent region, I now have the distribution of all the particles, in this case, spray drops, per region. Again, it's a big data table. This is the data that I'm interested in. I want to do a distribution analysis of these particles within this region. And again, then if you have multiple regions, I can do that. In the case in this group, they're looking at dental material, or actually they're looking at a dental implant, titanium screw, and they want to measure all the screw shavings. 
or all the little titanium particles that have come off and measure it and measure it, but they had to do within regions. And then they were doing a further distribution analysis. This is the latest example of this. The key is, once I've now classified it, there's one last part. In this header part in the measurement table, I need to take the class name and bring that over under the parent. If you've never done this, the data tables, the measurement tables in Image Pro, you can configure them in a number of ways to really tailor your data output for what the research needs are. And this is just an example. You can actually drag these and do further classification. So let me just go through a real quick example here. And let me go to Image Pro. So here's my wedding paper, approximately two inches by three inches. I created some ROI, so I want to do a distribution analysis and cover, cover the majority of the paper. Measurement types, I have my object class name, area, and I took mean diameter. I'm just going to do an auto dark. It's appropriate. And I'm going to count by ROI. So automatically, this is now, let me take off those names just to clear it out a bit and set none. But it's now color coded. Each of these regions, I have the data per region now. The second step is, now I want to do the classification. In this case, I'm going to do a single variable class. Choose the right measurement. Here, I'm just going to take diameter mean. If you actually look at this data, and this is where you have to be, to be aware of these parent regions because they are measured objects, I don't want to include those in the analysis. Just by looking through, I knew the max diameter of all these objects within here was, uh, what did I say, point, I think I said point zero seven. Double check myself to make sure I didn't miss that. Yep. So I'm going to enter in 0 0.07. Enter. So I know, just by looking at the data table, the maximum mean diameter of any of these particles within here is 0 0.07. That will exclude any of these parent objects. And this is where the spread data is. If I had a standard SOP, I could enter my own fixed bin ranges here. I'm just going to do it for, for sake of demonstration. Respread it. My min and max now stay the same for my entering. And I can call this small, medium, and large. And when I press the OK button, you can see, if I zoom in a little bit, these are all now color coded into my three bins. I can now further take this, and this is where I mentioned, by bringing the class name, I can drag that to here. And now I have all the data for each of my parent regions. If everyone's ever seen this part, I can collapse all by just simply right-clicking. And I can take region two. It tells me how many objects are in. If I wanted to look at the data, I could say expand one level. And that will tell me within that particular region, one large object, 16 medium, and 32 small. Again, I can always look at the individual data within region two. So this is how you go about doing distribution analysis within parent regions under Image Pro 10.